Hi guys. In the previous video, we had the same code in Visual Studio Code. And when we ran it, what the application did, it asked us for our name and then for our age. And then depending on, on the age, it uh, you know labeled us as an adult or a teenager or a minor. And this program went on and on driven by that while loop until the user input XX and then that while loop exited with the word break. So we have exactly the same application here now in Jupyter Notebooks and um, to run that application would be here. And let's, let's, let's take it for a test drive. So if I run that, it's now says, hi guys, what's your name? So let's go and say Frank. And now it asked me for my age and I say I'm 23. So, okay, I'm an adult. And you see here, because of the while loop is now asking for the next name. So let's say Jane. And let's make Jane a minor. Let's say 16 and see, you see now you're a minor. And now if I can go XX, then I exited the application. So that's one way of uh, looping. Now, what I did here in the previous video, I had while true, which is like always. So what we have here is an infinite loop and the only break point or is here. So if as long as the user does input XX, that loop would go infinitely. So there's another way to write that while loop and that is to have a condition here, which is not always true, but a condition where uh, it says while loop, where it says while username user name is not equal to xx. So now we have a condition which could be true if or is true if the user inputs xx. Now because I'm using username here, uh, you know, and, 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 and it, at this stage it is unknown in the application, I would have to define it here before the while loop and I'll define it as an empty string. Now, so our program has now two means of exiting. One is if the user types XX and the second one is by the break here. Now, if I remove the break is basically done. So the program, once the user types XX, the program does not execute all of this. And if I remove that break, our program will exit after inputting XX. However, it will still execute the whole thing. So and if I run that and, uh, oh, I misspelled it, right? But you see here through this error, if you don't define the username beforehand, you're gonna have a problem. So now if I run that again, so now I have uh, first name, I'll just say, uh, let's say Jenny, and let's say 35. And so now what's your name? Type XX to, ex uh, to exit. Now let's exit, and you can see now, it goes on because it says my name is XS. So it, it, because that break statement is missing, it executes the rest and I still have to input an age, which, which would you know bother me because actually I wanted to quit. So I just put in 12 and then now it quits. So you see the, the break statement was quite useful here uh, because it's basically stopped the, the program, uh, you know, at the point that I wanted to stop. Right, but that's another way of using the while loop. Now, in Julia, there's another uh, type of loop, which is the for loop. And the for loop structure is basically like this, for, and then you have a counter, a sort of a variable, which is a, basically a counter, typically called i, and then in, and now you need a range. So what's your range? Let's say from one till 10. So that application will, go, as long as the user does not input XX, this application will go 10 iterations and then it will exit, exit on its own because it's limited in the range, for, uh, in the, it's limited by I. As long as I is below 10, it, uh, the loop goes, but as, uh, as soon as I becomes 10, it just exits. 
Now, it works, it works fine. The only problem is that in contrast to the while loop, this here is adding a sort of a limitation which is not desired nor required by the application because what if the user needs to, you know, uh, do 100 iterations? That's bad. And, you know, you can put in big numbers as well. It's still a limitation because it's not infinite. So, as you see here, in this case, the, the for loop would work, but it's not the right choice. While would have been a better choice. And we can, to prove it that it works, it works. It's just you won't notice the difference. I mean, you as a user wouldn't know, like, oh, is that a for or a while loop? It just works the same way. And if I can say here, my and uh, 14, so he's a minor. And so and if I quit, if I type XX, I'm, I quit the program. It's just that this one is limited to go to this number. Whereas my while loop previously is infinite. It is truly infinite. Right. Now, uh, let's go back. To, so, so you see always when, you, when, you, when you're working with loops, be, and it doesn't matter whether in Julia or any other programming language, always pick the loop appropriate for your application. Because the for loop is appropriate in other things when we deal with, with, uh, with lists, with sort of sequences, then uh, a for loop would make sense. But in our case here, a for loop doesn't make sense at all. So let's go and say while and keep that true because this was the best scenario. I don't have to, you know, uh, have here additionally that, that username to define username variable and use that as a condition. It is unnecessary because the break does all the work. And avoiding the break is again uh, has some side effects, which basically, even if the user types XX, it still all that stuff gets executed. Right. Now, uh, there's another statement which is called continue, and we can um, take it here. And let's say yy. So, and continue. So what's the difference? The difference is, the difference is break takes you out of the loop completely, whereas continue just takes you out of this iteration and will then uh, uh, take you again in the next iteration. So let's try it out. If I run that and I type, uh, you know, let's say like, um, uh, Lena and uh, age is 36. So now I'm in the second iteration. Now, if I go XX, I would exit. If I go YY, you know, I start again. You see, now what's your name? Type XX, XX. Now I typed YY. Now it started again. So I'm in the next iteration. So I'm saying like uh, Bob and uh, 12. So now it asks me again, what's your name? So I go YY, another iteration, YY, another iteration. And if I need to exit XX, then, oh, still, uh, I have to do capital X's, XX, now I exit. So you can see here, oh, it, because I typed it at the age, you can see here that the, the, the effects of both of them. One is break. Break is basically, um, um, takes you completely out of the loop, whereas continue just takes you out of the current iteration, but takes you to the next uh, iteration of the loop. And the error here is because I, it asked me, because I typed XX in, in, in lowercase, so I was at the age and I typed XX. And here's another typical thing. It did not expect a text, but expected a, a digit, a, a, you know, a, a sort of an integer. and this is another thing which you have in, 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 in real life programs. You have to cater for wrong inputs. Don't always assume that users input numbers. What if they input text? What happens there? And this is something which we, do, we will handle further down the line.